Okay, in the previous video, we talked a little bit about Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin we know is electronic cash, digital currency, an intangible asset. How is Bitcoin stored? Since you can't touch it, you can't collect it, you can't put it in your pocket, you can't bring it home and put it in your safe, you can't leave it in a safety deposit box at a bank because it doesn't have physical form, how is it stored? It's stored in a blockchain. Okay, what does that mean? Well, blockchain is a new technology that enables continuous monitoring of the whole accounting system. Blockchain was created as part of the invention of Bitcoin to provide a secure, decentralized cryptocurrency tracking system. A blockchain is just that, a decentralized, distributed ledger. In English, that means an accounting system available to everyone on the peer-to-peer -peer network. So if Bitcoins are stored in this blockchain, which is the open accounting system, and everyone in the peer-to-peer -peer network can then log in, view, and confirm the validity and the accuracy of the records. The blockchain ledger that stores a Bitcoin is independent, it's secure, and it's non-modifiable. That means the information in the open ledger cannot be changed once posted. So the idea of a Bitcoin being stored in a blockchain is that everyone everywhere can look at these records and verify that the records exist. Now we said Bitcoin is stored in a blockchain. Bitcoin requires blockchain, but blockchain does not require Bitcoin. Keep that in mind because there's a lot of uses for blockchain beyond just Bitcoin from which it was created. Blockchain was originally created along with Bitcoin and that was to provide the secure decentralized Bitcoin tracking system. But now it's grown in use beyond just a tracking system for Bitcoin. So let's go to 165. Which of the following is a characteristic of a blockchain? One, encryption secure, distributed ledger, an open accounting system. Yes, that's a blockchain. Two, non-modifiable audit trail of transactions. Yes, both of those describe a blockchain. Remember, blockchain was created as part of the invention of Bitcoin to provide that secure, decentralized cryptocurrency tracking system. All right, now the minutia, the little technical stuff about the blockchain, how much of that are you going to need to know for the CPA exam? Well, probably not that much the first time around. They're just starting to test this now. A blockchain record exists in a file that consists of blocks which are documented transaction records. So people execute these Bitcoin transactions, but those same Bitcoin transactions actually only exist as part of an automated process. And this is why blockchain was originally needed. So if Bitcoin we know is created by mining, right? That's solving those mathematical puzzles. Then someone buys that Bitcoin and information about that transaction is posted as the first block for everyone to see in the blockchain, but some information will be missing, such as the identity of the seller and buyer. By design, that's meant to be anonymous. Now, every time there's some relevant information with regard to that Bitcoin, a new block is added to the chain, and that's probably all you're gonna to need to know about the blocks of a blockchain for the CPA exam. If you wanna know a little more, in the beginning, blockchain was a database, a distributed ledger, and that was good for transactional records, such as Bitcoin, or other cryptocurrencies. Blockchain got its name because it processes the transactions in a group known as a block and adds each new block, each new transaction to the end of the ledger, to the end of the chain. So right from the start, blockchain was very attractive for use because it's transparent, very resilient. It's immutable, which means it's unable to be changed. And all of that without a third party. How about that? So you don't need a financial institution to do this for you. You don't need a government to regulate it. Blockchain achieves all these traits using techniques and technologies that have actually been around for quite some time. Blockchain uses cryptography to be transparent, uses public and private keys for encryption to allow access to specific data by specific parties, 
only those who have proper keys. Remember we said in the Bitcoin, we were talking about the fact that you get a private key and you got to keep your own private key confidential. Blockchain is resilient in that it distributes a copy of the ledger to each computer on the network. And it's immutable by using hash, hashing algorithms to mathematically link each of those blocks together and to prevent them from being changed once they're on the chain. And blockchain does all of this without a third party. How big is that? That's a huge disruptor. And that's what I want you to know about blockchain is that it's a potentially the bigger disruptor even than Bitcoin. It's a huge disruptor because we can use blockchain in a lot of different purposes beyond just to be the accounting system for Bitcoin. So blockchain began this way just for Bitcoins, but it has evolved to become a platform for sharing information. Now let's look at the security of blockchain. We said it's secure. Why? Well, the security of blockchain depends on three factors, independent confirmation, asymmetric encryption, and fast computing capacity. And let's look at all three. Independent confirmation refers to the fact that anyone who wants to look at that blockchain can call up the file, look at the open ledger, and if there's a lot of people on the network doing that, then you don't have to worry about fraud because everyone's tracking every one of those transactions. You've got a lot of people tracking transactions and making sure they're legitimate. So you need that. You need a lot of users. Independent confirmation is good with a lot of users makes it even better. So that's part of the security of blockchain. You need independent confirmation. The more users, the better. And that's probably why blockchain is not going to be instantly a disruptor but it's going to happen over time as more people use it. Now, asymmetric encryption, that allows a user who wants to post a block to the chain to be anonymous when posting. And at the same time, there's a process that determines that this is a legitimate block. This is a legitimate block that should be added to the blockchain so that we can legitimize each of those blocks as having been confirmed and verifiable so that's the asymmetric encryption, allowing it to be anonymous as far as who posted the block. And then, of course, fast computing. If we're going to track a number of these blocks and blockchains, you need a lot of computing power. Why? Because you've got to keep up to the minute about whether it's a legitimate block, a legitimate blockchain, or whether someone has tried to implement fraud into the blockchain and we'll talk about why fraud is more difficult when there's more users more viewers on the peer-to-peer -peer network and easier if there's not a lot of viewers fraud is easier if there's not a lot of viewers more difficult if it's a bigger more widely used peer-to-peer -peer network all right let's try this question the emerging technology known as blockchain relies on all the following except what? Is it A, fast computing capacity? Or B, independent confirmation, the ability for all users to view the open ledger? C, public and private keys, asymmetric encryption? Or D, mining bitcoins? What do you think the answer is? Leave me a comment and then like and subscribe because that helps the channel out a lot. And if you need help with emerging technologies like blockchain and Bitcoin and what you need to know to pass the BEC exam, go to cpaexamtutoring.com, click on one part and then BEC course and get yourself on I-75, the right road to passing BEC.